forever. <laughs> Dog! Welcome to the Chop with the Trees and Manila, where we give you the weekly recap and rundown of Drag Race Holland. Who's on top? And who gets the chop? Manila! The Trees Royale! I'm feeling extra glamorous tonight. Giving everything you got, trying to make it to the top. Never ever gonna stop, even if you get the chop, chop, chop. You got the chop. Don't be a bitter, bitch. Just make them eat it, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Let's jump it up, Latrice. Ooh, it's time for another episode, Drag Race Holland. Last week, after talking with their little puppets for a mini challenge, we got our top four queens to perform in Maxima the Rusical. Uh, stunning, fun, educational. And then they served up three looks on the runway. They had beachwear, cocktail attire, and evening gown, all in red, white, and blue, bitch. Janie Jack K slayed as the winner of that week's episode. Mama Queen and Abby, oh my God, had to lip sync for their lives, but Shante, they both stay. Fred could not decide, so we have a top four for our grand finale this episode. Woohoo! Top four! No more hoes. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, this is episode eight. It's the grand finale. Mm -hmm. This is the last of the last of the last. We will have a new winner after this. So when we get into the workroom, there is no lipstick message because bitch Janie and Envy are pissed. They are not having it with this double save bullshit. They were like, no. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Janie yeah, and they felt like they, that, that feeling of being like one less person to compete against has been like snatched from them. I, I mean, I, I was a little bit like, really? Uh, last week? But this week, I'm so happy that it was there because <laughs> as they are de-dragging, Abby and Envy kind of have like a little sister-to-sister -sister chat about... Uh, Abby just feels hurt. Like, this is the second yeah. time that Envy yeah. has, like, th uh, said her name when they asked who should go home that episode. <laughs> um, Envy is like, it's a competition, girl. And, you know, it's... It, it's nothing more than that. It's nothing more than that. I mean, she... She, she's, she tried to squash the beef, right? But yeah. it's, like, hard to say to your sister, like, girl, like, I love you, but, like, when it all comes down to it, like... You're the you're weakest link. of the group. Yeah, the weakest link. Yeah. Yeah. That's hard to say. It's hard to say. And, uh, you know, it, it doesn't make uh, Envy feel good having to say it, but I understand how Abby feels having it said. But that being said, um, I'm actually okay with the fact that it's the top four after watching the, the episode. Yes, because so. I feel like this is like, they kind of set this up, like even in episode one, where it's going to be the two South American sisters who kind of like have been doing drag together. Um, and are they going to really be sisters? Or are they going to fight the whole time? Right. They set this up in the first episode when those bitches got in that fish tank and started slaying yes. the other queens. They yes. were like, we are gorgeous we're, we're and here, we bitch. are each other's competition. Pose. Hoes, put it on a platter, bitch. <laughs> yes. See, were... I was upset last week because, like, I thought that there was going to be, like, the final fight, the final, like, showdown between the two sisters. Like, it could have been in the lip sync, and then one of them would have to go home. Right, right, right. But I'm okay because we got it the... before the freaking credits even started in this episode. <laughs> right. They had to sit it on down and hash it on out. <laughs> um, but, oh, my God. Okay, so the next day, though... Um, in come Patty Pam Pam, Room, Megan Schoolburn, Madam Madness, that is Jean and Chelsea Boy. All the girls are back. They're all catching up. And then Fred comes in the workroom, honey. Yes. But she so was shady, though. She was so shady. <laughs> yes. I love that about Fred because, like, you know, it's, it's 
hard not to take yourself very seriously when you're in this competition. But then you have like Fred going in there and fucking making jokes and making fun of you, like not winning. <laughs> you kind of no. just have to accept it and you laugh gotta. with it and move you on, gotta. honey, right? Yeah, it is what it is, bitch. It is what it is. <laughs> That's great to see the girls back, though. Yeah, they all look mm-hmm. good, too. They look very re- rested. Yes. <laughs> they look very rested. Yeah. Ready. And yeah, all that. But um, but then we get a video message from RuPaul, yeah? Oh, yes. Because, well, first, well, first of all, the girls find out that there's a top four. Right. They introduce all the, the finalists, which they were gagged, because they were doing the math. And they were like, wait a minute, there's six of us in here. Yeah, what's, so, what's happening? Who's yeah. who's the last person to walk in here for the top? I love because Cheddar Jean throws a little shade. She goes, The three of you deserve it. I mean, the four of you. <laughs> <laughs> you know who she was talking about. And you know who she was talking about. No I, question. I mean, you know, like, it's so easy to be bitter. I, you know. It's, lo- it could be fun. It's fun to be bitter, you know. Mm-hmm. As long mm-hmm. as it's not real, because you know she really don't give a shit. She good. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're yeah. all going to be successful in their mm-hmm. own ways, and it's fun. But you know, this like it, it, it could be, but it's also for drama's sake, you know. And I love that. We need it. You know, right. like Abby. Oh my god. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very that. Oh, we get a video message from Rue. Congratulations on making it to the grand finale. This is your last chance to prove yourself and to the world that you are Holland's first drag superstar. Prepare for the fight of your life, life, life. Racers, start your engine and may the best drag queen win. You clock that? I totally did. I love it. I actually, like, applauded. I was like, okay. They clocked. I mean, yes. We changed... Uh, gentlemen, start your engines. May the best woman win. To racers, start your engines, and may the best drag queen win. And I am here for it. I'm here for that. Yep, that's what it should. That's what it needs to be. That's yeah. it. Well, I, the thing is, is that like RuPaul used that line from an episode of like the Carol Burnett show or something like that. So it, mm-hmm. it always kind of like played in a little bit of nostalgia for her, and so she kind of put it into her show. But now it's the show's evolving, and what we're considering is like what you know gender identity. This is like a good, you know, any everyone is welcome, and everyone's doing drag. Right, I love that. Mm-hmm. Titties on the runway. Woo! <laughs> We have actual. We actually have a, a, a maxi challenge this episode. Jesus. It's not just them like showing off their best gra- gown and answering, you know, question and answer. You know what I mean? <laughs> we got talent ca- competition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have to walk the runway in their ultimate best drag. They have to do a podcast interview with Fred and Nikki, and then then they have to do choreography with Gerald and Frank for a main stage performance of a RuPaul lip sync medley extravaganza. Darling, this is. Action packed. Like, this is a lot of responsibility for one day, bitch. Mm-hmm. Like, but you're in the final and we're going to see who the queen of queens are. It is. Like, this is just it. Like, yeah. more pressure. You either crack or rise to the top, honey. You got to do a lot of stuff. You got to learn some choreography. Then you have to plead your case in like a, an interview. Like, you have to do professional mm-hmm. and interview and interview. like kind of like use this as like, this is working your way up to uh, convincing them to give you the crown, yeah. right? Why, what What makes you worthy? And uh, I love I love that it has a lot of responsibility because I want someone who's well-rounded. It can do all of these things, you know what I mean? To represent. That's, yeah. that's what a true queen is and what, what they do. Um, but they have to go into dance rehearsal, honey. And Ooh, it's, yes. <laughs> it starts right away, and they only have a few hours to learn all this choreography. Abby's distracted by Frank. Girl, get get out of his pants, girl. Get get focused. She keeps fucking up the same step, girl. Look, See, Abby. <laughs> Abby was distracted by Frank, but I was I was distracted by Abby being distracted by Frank. Because, oh, wow. like, I feel for her. <laughs> She's already like, hey, girl, I, I mean, like, none of the girls want me here right now. So let me just, you know. You're a mess. I, I think that, like, she was probably just like, you know, like, it, like I knew that Ab- Abby's a great performer. So I wasn't worried that she was not missing up the line or messing up the steps. You know yeah, what I mean? She was going to get it. She was going to yeah, get it. I knew it. she was going to get it. Mm-hmm. Of, of all the girls, she was definitely yeah, going to get it. She was going to get it. It might have took a second, but she's going to get it. Yeah. And they, and they were doing some, like, g- you know, sturdy uh, choreography and, and, and 
he, they want to make sure that we co- go out with a bang. Which is good. Yeah. Yeah. Like we should. Yes. So thank you to the, the choreographers. Gerald was a tough coach, but it, it's going to look good. It's going to look really good. And then they go in and they sit down with the podcast with Fred and Nikki. And it's Nikki's first time seeing all the queens um, out of drag. So she's is, like quite entertained and yes. she's like gagging. She's like, wait a minute, oh, what? Oh. Wait, oh. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because like when we shoot this, like the, the cameras are always on us. So we always assume that the judges are like in some like room, some, some hidden room, some watching. big control room, just watching all the and that screens. Is not. But they're not. They're not. They're at home with the kids. Nikki is like worried about like you know her fashion line, you know what I mean? Like they don't right. really care until they get to work and they have to literally sit down and judge. <laughs> so they don't even know what these queens look like out of drag. That's insane. Not at all. Not even a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> Abby has fire. She has passion. She's a fighter. Um, she wants to succeed because you know expressing herself and do what she does in her drag was never really accepted in her family. Mm-hmm. Um, so now she's just doubling down and she is making herself seen, heard, known. Um, I think it's a really like lovely story of like triumph for Abby. To go out Absolutely. here and tell her story. Absolutely. And I was really especially happy that Mama Queen got a chance to really explain her gender fluidity to Fred and Nikki because, um, you know, Nikki didn't know, you know, yeah. that she she sees her one way on the stage and that's it. But, you know, Mama Queen doesn't want much. I don't, she just asks to be seen as a human. You know, that's not too much to ask. And, you know, they talk about the freedom to express themselves and, you know, however they like. And the fact that everyone else is living in the confines of, you know, societal norms. Mama Queen is not that about that life. She wants to be free like a bird. Fly, fly, fly away. <laughs> fly, 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 fly. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Yeah, I, I get it. Like, she, like, was saying with her friends, like, they don't even really have, like, a gender Like, they don't call each other by, like, he or she, or all of it's kind of acceptable, and it's all just kind of words at a certain point when when they know that each other know that we're not defined by these pronouns necessarily Mm -hmm. or these genders. Mm -hmm. I thought it was very educational. I think that it was... uh, I think it was, like, a good learning experience for for both Fred and for Nikki, right? And for the audience. Oh, for everyone. For everyone and all who have got a chance to view and watch, um, it was a, g- a great uh, educational segment, uh, and I'm 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 here for it. And then moving on, we have Janie, which Fred was like, you know, the other queens think you're kind of bitchy, and then J- Janie's like, yeah, you know, I'm confident, I understand that, <laughs> and I'm I'm all cool with that. That's their <laughs> issue to like. I, I love Janie. Out. She has so much confidence and. The best thing about it is that, like, during the season, we've been able to see uh, some of her vulnerable moments. Some of these, like, things where she's telling these stories where she was being bullied. She was, uh, we experienced her relationship with her family and, like, you know, the the hurt that she felt um, and the disappointment that she's not able to experience this and share this and have a proud moment with her father, who has passed away. And to see someone that has had all these things happen to her and she's still holds her head up high, still, like, strives to do things per- perfect. But, like, she knows that it's... She understands it doesn't have to be perfect, but she's going to mm-hmm. get as close as she can. Why not? <laughs> because she has the ability to. Uh, and make it look easy. Yeah. Yeah. Effortless. Same with, same with Envy. You know, she has, like, a, a really... Uh, like a really interesting coming out story on how she's immigrated to a new country and how she's, you know, she had, to, you know, her own insecurities and, and look at her now. Look at her now. She's been focusing on not the insecurity part, but like focusing on like being successful and succeeding and doing the things that she wants. And, you know, any flaw, you could just cover it up with some glitter, bitch. Baby. <laughs> and I can tell anybody that's energy well spent. That's energy well spent. If you are, Focus your energy on being successful rather than what's not going right for you. You're going to be a whole a lot ahead, more ahead of the game. You know what I mean? Yes. Just, like, don't let your saboteur come tweaking out and you be looking like boo-boo the fool. So. I mean, yeah, the inner saboteur is going to put out hurdles for you to overcome. And it's up to you 
to jump over those hurdles and make it look easy. And jump you- over them or knock them down, bitch. I can do a hitch kick, bitch, and knock a hurdle down because I can't jump that high anyway. So <laughs> She's just like moving. I'm going to make a way. <laughs> <laughs> Well, why don't we get to the runway uh, right after this little short break? Ooh, I'm so excited for our final grand finale runway! Ooh, girl! And we are back to the chop with Latrice Manella, and we are about to get on this runway, honey, because there is a lot to behold. Ooh. It's our final, final runway. We have our main stage judges, Nikki Plesson, Sane Wallace, DeViri, still can't pronounce her name right, Klaus Iverson, the one that made the 18 euro, 18,000 euro gown, and Nikki yes. Tutorials is back. Oh, and Fred of looking course. absolutely stunning with, with of yeah, course. like a floral arrangement, darling. Yeah, yeah. She's just, you know, she never surprises me now. <laughs> because uh, she keeps surprising you with the looks? She yeah, well, she keeps gagging me, girl, every week. She gagging. I was like, why are you gagging? She brings it every bull, honey. Yes, So yes. it's true. She's very bad. Tens across the board. So, uh, tens across the board. Abby, oh my God, Mama Queen, Envy Peru, and Jenny Jack Hay, they are performing the Lip Sync Medley in honor of RuPaul. And... It's chopped full of nuts, honey. <laughs> the looks, the choreo, the performances, like all of it, so much to take in. I I loved, I loved, I love how each of the girls had their own little like musical era. Did you notice that? Is that what was going on? Yes. Okay. So Jenny Jacquet had like an '80s look, like she was Cindy Lauper. Then Envy Peru, she had like the hood, the white hood of Kylie Minogue from the early 2000s, right? Abby, oh my God, was like Ariana Grande and, and Lady Gaga from Do- Rain On Me, right? Current. Okay, And okay. Mama Queen, she had like, uh, like a little disco-inspired uh, like glam rock moment happening. Okay. Okay, yeah. I didn't clock the- The, the, the different, like decades. The different, yeah, mm-hmm. I didn't clock that. I was like, why are everybody looking like they're 10 years apart? They were because 10 years apart. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, then, in that case, then kudos, girls. Yeah, I think that was, they they all look great in their individual um, little moment and stuff. It was, I thought Um, it was cute. I I mean, it's just like all the songs we love of RuPaul getting to be performed by a new set of queens. I I, I mean, it's great. You know what I mean? I love, I love it. I love and, it. And easy, because they didn't have to write their own lyrics or or whatever. Right? <laughs> right. They didn't have to write a verse. All you had to do is lip sync and dance. And, and absolutely like, no voguing. <laughs> and no voguing, girl. Because <laughs> if you can't, don't. <laughs> so then we have our six eliminated queens get to come back in their fabulous runway looks. Uh, do you... I love this because, you know, every queen has, like, their finale look made in case they make it to the end, and now they get to wear it. Did you have any standouts? Oh, my God. So, when Senator Jean first walked out (laughs) the runway, I was like, well, then why didn't you do this for Kermit and Piggy? This was your green and pink moment. It's because she had a couple weeks to go back home and have it remade (laughs) and to redeem herself in the same season. That's what happened. Redemption was made. It was like when they, when the season, what did they do that? Was um, was the season All-Stars that did the redemption looks when they had to? I think that was an All-Stars season. Yeah, maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, well, anyway, yeah, it was definitely redemption, and she turned it. I was like, okay, this is what you meant to do. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, see? Yeah. So, no bad looks for Seta Jean anymore. Like, no she, bad looks. She canceled it yeah, out. She, I love that. She canceled it out. Fred says to them. <laughs> oh, so I, my God. Looking at all of you up here, she's like, oh, now I see why all of you guys went home. <laughs> The, sh- How shady. the shade, the shade of it all. No, he says, "Just Girl, kidding, just kidding, just kidding." <laughs> so it was all the queens go to go to the back of the stage, and now we have our last runway of our queens, our top four. Yeah, and they have to wear their ultimate drag. Now, this is what we're looking for. This is what you are looking for: fashion, eleganza, avant-garde, like the the most. Yes. 
out of this is what I'm expecting because this is your finale. This, this is, is what, what you want you... to be crowned in. Well, this, this is... is yeah, this is your coronation look. So this is your let's... Queen Maxima blue with the orange sash yes. <laughs> it... mm-hmm. moment. Mm-hmm. Yes, let's see what you're gonna get. We have first out Jenny Jacque. Honey, lovely in this Victoria's Secret model inspired look with the 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 wings and this wine burgundy yeah beautiful oh my gosh so beautiful i was like yes ma'am you are an angel yeah (laughs) for sure and it was a similar fabric if not the same fabric as like her makeover episode with her mother so it that it was it brought in moments of that it mm-hmm. like the wings brought in like a little bit of like her her bee look her queen bee look in the very beginning episode so she had wings in the the beginning and the and the ending all mm-hmm. of these little like details that she had the the story she gets to tell later on about her it being her old school drag like these are these are drag pieces that she's inherited from her drag mothers so this is a part of what she does representing old school drag and you know doing it a future you know doing it in the present and in the future then we have Abby, oh my God, where was this? Oh my God. Finally, it happened to me right in front of my face and I just cannot hide it. Oh my goodness, girl, you look good. Oh, yes. Oh, was she bent that? Well, they didn't bend the corner because they were standing there. They they let the girls be like there and they just opened up and panned up on the girl. Oh, it was like the reveal. Wow. I was like, yeah. Abby, oh my God, looked so so fucking fantastic. The best. It looks so fantastic. Oh my gosh. The the gown beautiful. Her makeup gorgeous. This like hand beaded headpiece that she was wearing. Wow. Gorgeous. And I love that it was like gorgeous, this Black gorgeous. Widow moment, you know, like it was, you know, Halloween just ended, so I'm still in my my Halloween vibe. Oh, yeah. So it's perfect timing. And she's the Black Widow. She like she killed everyone that went uh, lip synced against her. Just sent them home. <laughs> True that. You know? She did. She did do that. She did. And then right behind her, Envy. Envy Peru. Oh, my God. Girl, she's giving us fashion meets drag inspired Dita Von Teeth. Futuristic showgirl. All of it. All of it. And, bitch, I mean, that mug. The way that that mug was just sitting, honey, that makeup was flaw- like somebody just blew it onto her face and it just airbrushed and she looked bitch. like she was, was airbrushed i love that she had like this big coat and then it revealed so that it was something sleeker and sexier it, it was yes. i think it's the same um designer i i think it's bjorn van den berg who did a oh, lot yeah? of her looks um I've been I've been a fan of both of them. I follow both of them on Instagram, so I like recognize him because the way he does his uh his details is so perfect and f- kind of Art Deco, kind of futuristic, very glamorous. I love I love it. I think it it harkened back to her entrance look, but like the grand version of her entrance look. So it was uh-huh. so good. She looked perfect. Magnifique. Well, we expect that Magnifique. from Envy Peru coming down the runway. We do. Everything. We absolutely do. Then, oh, we have the creature, the mama queen, covered in feathers, peacock, tropical bird of paradise, uh, horns in like this, like, uh, I, we've seen her with the, with the like Maleficent horns before a little bit. Yeah. So this was beautiful. The, the, it, was, it was like she was a fairy, like from like, oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, from the left. Like a, <laughs> Very like a multicolored bird of prey, <laughs> fairy dragon, beast monster. <laughs> Goddess. All of it. <laughs> all of that. So all the girls of that. all look fantastic. They look divine. Then Fred brings out like their little baby pictures and starts asking them. Girl. Yeah, that question, like, what would you say to your little your little self? And that's, you know, of course, always the a tearjerker moment, you know, for the girls. Yeah, I but, was really uh, impressed with Mama Queen's speech. Like what she what she knew she was gonna tell herself, like, you know, Mama Queen, if you could feel like this is something that she's been like always thinking about, like going back and trying to make her life easier for herself when she was younger. Uh, 
Not that she needs uh-huh. to tell her younger self. Not that any of these queens need to tell their younger selves how to like be better because all of them have gotten to this point and all of them have fought and found their way and look fabulous in this way. grand finale moment. It brought a tear to my eye. Yeah. But Mama Queen, um, Mama Queen did one question and answer. <laughs> I just got that. She won question and answer. Yes. Q&A. So let's get to these Queen. judges critiques. <laughs> On face questions. So Nikki Tutorial yeah. says Janie, Janie's outfit kind of looks dated. Um, that's when Janie explains that it is uh, it dated because it is vintage. It's from the 90s. And damn, girl, like that's when I started doing drag back in the 90s. So it's kind of weird to think like, oh, shit, this is vintage right now. But yeah, it's vintage. It's an homage to yeah. her drag mother. When does something become vintage? Is I, like uh, after 25 yeah, years or something? I say 25 years. Why not? Why not? <laughs> Our... Yes, girl. I wear a lot of well, my damn. vintage drag for We're sure. <laughs> Where's up, damn? Why not? <laughs> yeah. Janie Jack Hay is always a true entertainer. She is. She. The judges were said that her performance was amazing. We know that she is. She just rides right there, like just, just right there on perfection all the time. Yeah, she, she knows what to do. She knows what she's doing and takes what she's doing very seriously so i always love watching what she's going to pull out next and how she's going to rise to the challenge and rise to the occasion she always delivers and never um disappoints so Mm -hmm. good for you uh janie um so then nikki loved that abby is sexy and classy um you know in this way and um, she's covered up on the runway for a change, and <laughs> and Fred just loves that she's a fighter. We all love that she's a fighter. Like that, she has literally knocked bitches out left and right to get where she's at in this finale, and it speaks volumes to her um, integrity and her will to to survive and. Yeah, and it's so easy to. So it's so easy lot, to. A lot of girls would have. And yeah, a lot of, a lot and of a lot of girls, she pissed towel, off a lot of girls you know? because of the outcome that she was able to. She was able to save herself four times, like that's like unheard of. And yeah. like you know, it, it 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 can it can be a it can be a shock. You know, I know I was shocked. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, she she knows she's the underdog. You know, you know she shows up, she performs hard, she delivers. Uh, but then the question is, are, is she ready to win? You know, that's the part. Then we have Envy. And of course, they tell her that she's <laughs> she's perfect and she looks fantastic. Um, and even though she had some hiccups in her dance in the beginning, they still like she's still so uh, she's still such like a high grade drag queen. You know what I mean? Like high grade, <laughs> like silicone. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good friend. Like Fred's like, like she's able to like mix drag with the fashion. She's able to like make it pr- like current. You know, like it doesn't. You know, it's of the now. Yeah. Um, and I, it's just it's impressive. It's impressive and inspiring. Like I know some bitches are gonna watch and be inspired. I.e. or. AKA. Oh yeah, I'm stealing her looks right now. Looks like I mean, shit. Jesus Christ! But, I'm taking the money. I'm taking the money that we make off this podcast from I our mean, advertisers. Thank you for our sponsors because that money is going directly to recreating some of Envy <laughs> Peru's looks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Yes, 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 yes. From last week. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> But the judges, all of Mama Queen's message of perseverance in this comp- in her presence in this competition, um, and both Nikki and Fred say, "Do I like your outfit? It doesn't really matter. <laughs> I don't care what you have on because you, as a a Transcends. human, an entity, a being, is just so transcends all that you put on. Like it's just your inner." Spirit really shines, and and that speaks volumes. Because if your your soul speaks over your physical appearance, I mean, that's what you really honestly. Really want. A lot of that's a lot of us really, drag really queens, want. like, and I know, like, I do a lot of this too. Like, you know, you put on all this drag so that people can see what's on your inside. 
what Mama Queen has done in this competition was show who she is on the inside. And now the outside reflects how you view her as a person. So, yeah, like, I, th- I think so that the judges wonderful. were, it wasn't their favorite That's look, beautiful. but it didn't matter to them because, like, they got what she was putting out there. Like, her vision is now being able to be seen yeah. and interpreted the proper way by the, those who are viewing her. And it's art. And art is what? Subjective. So it doesn't really matter. It starts a conversation. And that's, that's all, all that you can really ask for. That's all you can ask for. <laughs> it matters after the, yeah. Yeah, at the end because of the like day. Because like after, after so the season, Mama all Queen, the queens on the know. season are going to get better looking outfits. You know what I mean? Like, even though this of season of drag elevate. had some of the best <laughs> outfits yeah. I've ever seen on a season of like Baby. your regular standard season of yeah. drag race. You know what I mean? <laughs> Unfortunately, Abby, oh my God, and Mama Queen aren't the winners this season. It's not that. So we have Janie and Envy, our top two, who get to have a little pep talk to each other, which I think is really sweet, um, before they lip sync for the crown. Uh, Lovely Lady Gaga, born this way. I love this lip sync. What did you think? Ooh, there ain't no other way. Baby, I was born this way. Oh, my God. So, I thought it was so... A perfect song to end this season. Like, that's all we've been talking about is, you know, being authentic and being proud and comfortable in the skin that you're in. And to do this lip sync, I know the girls were feeling it, honey. Because they were giving me what I needed. I saw a little cut two steps that I didn't know Envy had in her. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, oh, really? Okay. You know, Janie, of course, never, you know, disappoints. And they both were really, their hearts were It was It was a on fire. grand finale on fire. Of, for lip sync. For sure. Fred's like, Drawned. fireworks, fireworks. I mean, it was, it was a... I got hyped up. I, I, having not been to a live drag show in forever, yeah. like I was on the edge of my seat. I wanted to be throwing money at them. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> we crown a winner, and Holland's first drag superstar is Envy Peru. <laughs> oh my gosh, honey! I mean, I, I, day one, right? Did we not see it day one? Day yeah. one, honey. And she just yeah. kept it coming the entire season. Like, she, she well, girl. She was, yeah, definitely. She came in. Uh, we All the other queens knew that, oh, Envy Peru, she's one of the like, most popular drag queens in the Netherlands right now. And she has, like, such a, an amazing style. That it, it shook all the other queens, for sure. So to watch this season... Uh, watch her win all those episodes. Um, yeah, she. It wasn't a surprise per se, but like, yeah, the the no. winner of the season no. and a great season it was. I'm so happy for Envy Peru, and Envy Peru is actually joining us here on the chop right after this break. Woo! We are back with Latrice and Manila. So we have our mailbox is full of emails. Remember, you can email us at latriceandmanila at gmail.com. Uh, Latrice, you found an email you wanted yeah, to read? from uh, Beatrix, right? Uh, Beatrix. Uh, can you please have another Dutch queen as a guest? Oh. <laughs> They're all so fierce, and for such a tiny country, it would be incredible to have them on the international stage. Love you both, Beatrix. Well. <laughs> we are so lucky to have with us the winner, season one, Drag Race Holland, the beauty, the talent, the stunning and sickening drag queen herself, Envy Peru! 
Yes, honey. Get face. Get face. Get face. Face. Yes, darling. darling. Oh, you look Congratulations, Andy Pope. Oh, oh my God. Key. Yes. I don't have any on, but I'm pinching my nipples right now. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're so happy for you. Thank you so much, girls. Uh, wow. Yeah. A dream coming through, of course. It sounds so cliche, but uh, to actually now knowing and to share with the world uh, that I won this season is truly like a full circle moment. And uh, I, I, I just can't. I'm so overwhelmed with love. Oh, God. <laughs> You deserve we, uh, it, honey. You yeah, you really, it. really do deserve it. Like, girl, watching you this season was amazing. Uh, first of all, the second you walked in that workroom, mm -hmm. all the queens and the entire <laughs> audience, like, had like a vision. Like, that's so Raven. <laughs> yeah. You winning this yeah. crown, the scepter, and every and the dress. Yeah. And the dress. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I love the dress. Well, you're about the only one that can fit it. So <laughs> true. true. <laughs> <laughs> it's made for you, darling. At the time of the recording of this podcast, we just found out that you won yesterday when it aired live. Um, so I mean, I'm assuming that there's like so much more stuff that's like about to happen now that we found out that you're the winner. Like, when's that photo shoot? Where's that freaking gown? Where's that scepter? <laughs> well, the, the crown and the scepter are behind me there. Oh, I see. Yeah, there it is. Yes. And, and it's not the same one they use on the, uh, the crowning moment because- This is the uh, real one. This is the real one because mm -hmm. it didn't arrive on time. <laughs> So uh, they, 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 they took something from the Miss Holland uh, pageantry, but um, this one is way um, more nicer. Uh, I'm gonna just say this, that this is all shade, oh. but it's real. Uh, Sorry. The fact that it didn't arrive on time does not surprise me. I know where it came from. Oh, really? <laughs> She's my jeweler, I love her so much, but I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna take this opportunity to, to let to let to let um to let Fierce Drag Jewels know that I'm still waiting for one of my pieces. You know, just, see, you know, see. just you know, I know she, I know she's been busy <laughs> making oh the crown and scepter for Drag Race Holland, but <laughs> you're still waiting. You know what? It's gonna be worth the wait because uh, it's the most beautiful drag jewelry that's in creation in the world right now. So yeah. you're very yeah. lucky to be owning this yeah. piece. I, I hope I, that you treat it well. I know that oh, some yeah. queens like, you know, like have to put it on a shelf, like make it nice. And it's way better than the season one RuPaul's oh. Drag Race crowd. With the stars in it, girl. <laughs> oh. It's beautiful. And uh, I can't, I can't believe that. I, I want to see whatever wig you're going to have made to wear that, that crown. I, I need to see you with the, with the, you know, like the off the shoulder, mm. with the with the scepter oh. and the crown. You know the pageant winners always <laughs> you know do the that. Yeah. Oh, pageant team! <laughs> you know the funny thing is, I try to put it on my head, but I know I have a big ass head, no. so it doesn't fit me. That's why you have to have big hair. Oh, oh, or, or a chin strap. Yeah. <laughs> Where get, get some get some big old pageant hair. I know you got your your hair people, honey, and that yeah. way you can plop it right on top of mm -hmm. your big hair. And then just like, yeah, you got it, girl. You got yeah. it. I ain't got to tell you, you what to do. You, you love the wigs, right? It's, just, oh, it's honey. from the same one. Bitch, as, okay. I'm looking at it. I'm like, <laughs> at first, I was like, hold on, hold on. Oh, oh, you bitch. I, I want to put, put a paper bag over my head. Envy, this is this is art, right? That you have right oh now. Oh my god! Uh, Thank for you. Our podcast Short. listeners, Envy is wearing oh. this beautiful, like, slick, sculpted gorgeous, wave. sculpted, beautiful. It's futuristic, oh. but vintage at the same time. But the the hair is crystalled. It's Bit beautiful. Crystalled. Yes. Wow. Oh. Yes, darling. I've got my hair, people, darling. I can what? I can hook you up. Please hook me up. Us up. I'm us up. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Miss Thing. Yeah. yeah, you 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 do you you doing that, honey, Miss. One <laughs> let, let it be known. The one thing you will never ever say about Miss Envy Peru is that she looks cheap. <laughs> never 
darling, honey. Lux, honey. Just Lux. Now, every week, we watch the episodes of Drag Race Holland. I'm kind of sad this is our last one. Me too. Oh, it is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, don't worry. We, we still have our, our new episodes coming out on Tuesdays and on Thursdays. Um, but every week, uh, Envy, we do our tops and our chops of the episode. Now, I probably mm-hmm. can guess what your top moment of the episode is. <laughs> <Really? laughs> well, guess. <laughs> Envy Boomer, <laughs> what is your top moment of this particular episode? Episode eight of the season, the first season of, of Drag Race Holland. What, what, what is losing. It? <laughs> <laughs> she was some stiff competition, girl. She was some stiff competition. So, oh wait. So what is no really? What is your top is obviously winning the winning the competition, right? Of course, yeah. Uh, but I have a lot of top moments in this episode. But of course, no, winning. Tell the... us, tell us. We want to know. Like, what are yeah. some of your highlights? My highlights are, um, of course. Uh, let's not talk all, about me all the time. But I really one of my top moments is Mama Queen um, uh, explaining her and showing her wisdom how she wants to be treated and every single answer she gave to Fred and Nikki uh, during the interview, but also during the runway was really inspiring um, for me. I really love that moment. That, that, so that's one of my tops. Um, of course, me and Janie showing uh, appreciation to each other before entering the lip sync. Yeah. Uh, oh, that, that was beautiful. That was a be- very special, beautiful moment. And um let me think. Oh, uh, the, the, oh, my God. The the message from RuPaul. Dear Envy Peru, congratulations. Uh, <laughs> Shoot the winner, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I I've never heard RuPaul say that with my name ever. So. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. so sorry. <laughs> Although I'm not not to like, you know, shit on your, your, your top moment, but I'm pretty sure RuPaul probably had like, uh, a version for each of the contestants. God, you were my fantasy. Okay. It was personal. She had just made it just last night. For you. She's like, Raven, uh, put me in that same exact makeup outfit that I wore that first episode. Let's do, let's do this. Uh, no, I... I it, it is a dream for, for all of us to have RuPaul say those words to us. So you're yeah. very lucky and wow. Well, congratulations, girl. Well, what's your, thank you. what, what's your top moment of this episode? Sin if he win, bitch. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that was like the icing on the cake. Um, I, like we really do have a lot of the same um, tops because um, again, with Mama Queen, I said that, you know, she won a Q&A on the stage. Like I just thought- yeah. Um, her being so eloquent and the way she expressed herself was uh, perfection. And yeah. like I said a long time ago, you have to teach people how to treat you. And I mm-hmm. think she did it with love and compassion and empathy in the right way so that uh, people are not, you know, standoffish about it. They are now willing to extend that olive branch and learn more from her having knowing what they know now. So I yeah. so yeah, there was a lot of beautiful moments and um but 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 bitch you winning was it for me. I was like Oh, I'm so happy to we, hear that. Yeah, we're gonna close it out. Let's close it out right, honey. And, <laughs> right? I gotta say, we I gotta finally say, had a good lip sync. Yes, oh! it was a great song. Right. <laughs> Ooh, you said that. <laughs> well, my top, my top moment, Evie, also involved you. Not not necessarily winning, but I'm really satisfied with that. That the opening of this episode where you and Abby like sat down, like <laughs> after all that shit happened, and you got, we we kind of had the story arc of you guys being sisters, and then we saw you know you really succeeding very well. But then also like having to be honest with yeah. with uh, with Fred and with Abby and you know letting everyone know that like you know Abby's not up to the standard in which which we want out of this competition and um, not using bullshit excuses or answers and being open and honest with your sister and then finally having that resolution at the end um, was great to see how you guys are still like you know family and sisters of course. Of course, it comes from a 
place of love and I'm not going to lie into your face because I think that's being a bad sister even though she didn't even though she didn't agree with me uh, on, on that period of time but um, the whole world is going to see that I'm lying in her face. And I think that's just horrible. I will always be honest to my, uh, to my sisters. Even though it's harsh, it's come from a place of love. And well, I think you're a great sister. Like, I would rather you be real with me than feed me bullshit. And then I'm sitting there looking like boo-boo the fool. Yeah. You know? yeah. And so yeah. You, you did the right thing. Yeah. And, and it's Abby's also a like, fighter so she can take it, you know? Yeah, of course. But it's also like, uh, I don't want to say her name, but we... We are being put so on the spot, you know, um, Fred wants a name. Yep. And of course, I don't want to say her name, but th- that's what he asked us to do. And we don't know, we don't know that before we go on, onto, the, onto the main stage. So don't blame me, girl. I just answered the question. You didn't. <laughs> yeah, <sure>. Okay. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> How about that? How about that? Now, what about our chops? Now, there's, there's got to be something about this episode. Envy, you were there, so you know, like, even the behind-the-scenes stuff. What do you hate about this episode? Like, there's got to be something. Well, I mean, obviously... <laughs> There's not much to hate about it. You won the damn sh- season. <laughs> what, what is your chop of this episode? Well, then I must say my chop of the episode was um, Abby still being mad, me saying her name on the stage. Uh, uh-huh. You know, um, I, I was hoping that like in episode seven before the finale, I was hoping that she would understand that I'm just answering the question. I'm just being honest you know, yeah. to her. Um, but she still was like very upset about it. And I was like, I thought I saw a little bit more growth. And, um, but apparently not, you know. <laughs> so gotcha. um, by now it's probably different. No, by now it's, no, it's of course, you know, we see it back and she knows what I, where um, where I came from and that mm-hmm. it came from a, from a place of love and there's no hard feeling. We're still sisters, you know, it's, it's people forget it's just a reality show, you know? Yes, and sometimes true. things, yeah, things happen. Uh, on the show, um, yeah, that are unfortunate. But uh, at the end of the day, we are all sisters. That's it. Exactly. And and we can't, and I know that it's documented for all of time now, but people have yeah. to realize that, like, when you get into an argument with one of your loved ones, um, that doesn't define your relationship from that point on. You know no. what I mean? So mm-hmm. we, we are we're lucky to get to watch it <laughs> yeah. over and over and over again on reruns. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's, it's nice that you guys are able to like, you know, put yourselves out there and just be real and, you know, show us some reality. I mean, it's a reality TV show, right? Amen. What about your chop, Latrice? Ooh, you know, I don't know. What's my chop? What did I didn't care for? Um... Because the season was wrapped up really nicely with a bow. It It really was. It was really packaged well. I mean, Uh now, like, now, now, there was a lot more promenading in the, uh, uh, the finale with that, the first dance you guys did. Oh, the Vogue challenge? No, well, it was kind of like that. That's what I'm saying. Like, it was, Frank didn't do what they did in the, the rehearsal. Yeah, I mean, something didn't happen because it looked like I was watching a lot of back and forth walking uh, and posing. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> she know. Uh, but that but that was, the, that, if that was the weakest moment of the show, then that's the weakest moment of the show because everything else was just so laid out beautifully. Um, I kind of didn't care because you guys mm. had so much shit to do and there was not enough <laughs> time to learn all this choreography, do interviews, get your look together for the runway. God. You know, it's a lot. In and one day. Lot. Yeah. In one day. Um, My chop is, now we didn't get to see this, but my chop is the fact that um, I know all y'all queens had to pack at the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> now we don't see like we see in like other episodes of, of Drag Race where the queens are like packing their bags at the end of the thing, but we don't know when when the show's over. Like y'all have to pack your shit up and go, and like they're like taking the set down, and you're like, oh, oh I'm still putting my, my wings in my bag. Like you're taking down the set. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that. Exactly that. That's so funny that you said because it went exactly like that. We were just packing our shit up, and I was like, "Oh uh, no, hold on, <laughs> I'm not They're ready." They're taking the I... lights down. Yeah, the main the stage was gone. Down. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's like don't a, leave me here. <laughs> it's a sad moment, right? When you like when you get to the end and then you have to pack, and it's like it's not the same feeling as when you get sent home and you're sitting there like sulking in your sadness, like oh I lost. No, yeah. this is like oh the show's done. Like get the fuck out of yeah. here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We on to the next show. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, that was a fair, yeah, that was a sad moment. I'm sad the show is over, but I, I really loved watching this season. It went by so fast. Yeah, so right. I, I don't know how it was for y'all, but it went by <laughs> really, really fast for us. And now, like, I'm like, oh, there's gonna be a little hole in my Thursdays, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. For me too. I'm always listening to you guys. And now what I'm going to do on my Thursdays. I mean, while well, we still go be talking, you know, um, yeah, but not about me. But not about you. <laughs> <laughs> Envy, we can still we'll, we'll make we'll make it a weekly we'll make it a weekly segment in our podcast where we just talk about Envy Peru for five minutes. How about that? I think our listeners will agree. Uh, I appreciate it. We'll just go on your Insta and say, okay. Okay, look at this bitch here, honey. Look at this hoe <laughs> sitting at the house, honey. <laughs> yeah, with my crowd. <laughs> so we want to talk. We want to. We're going to talk much, much more. We're going to dive deep into Envy Peru's experience on the first season of Drag Race Holland on our Thursday show. So I want to thank Envy for coming on to uh, the podcast today and giving us your tops and your chops and your mom your favorite and your least favorite moments of the episode. Congratulations again. Congratulations, darling. Thank you so much, girls. And make sure you guys tune in to our Thursday show where we will have the in-depth interview with Envy Peru. I can't wait. To hear that. Uh, and ooh. next Tuesday, because we don't have Drag Race Holland to watch, we will be having our first um, movie episode. So here's your homework. We are starting our movie club. So we will be watching Tu Wong Fu. Thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. So make sure you get in, get it, get it all going, honey. Get your old candies and popcorns and candy corns and red vines and stuff. So you can like, you know, order it over the weekend and that way we can chat about it on Tuesday. Thank you all so much for listening to The Chop. Make sure to subscribe to our show and you can rate and review us on your favorite podcast app. We have new episodes every Tuesday and every Thursday. Whoop, 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 whoop. And you can always email us and we might read your email on next week's show. Just email us at latriceandmanila at gmail.com. And you can follow us at Latrice Royale and at Manila Luzon and at Miss Envy Peru. Yes, Woo! darling, yes. And we'll see you next week to find out who gets the chop. The chop is not endorsed by Word of Wonder, Video Land, or any of their subsidiaries. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. Greg Grace Holland and all names, pictures, and audio clips are registered trademarks and or copyrights of their respective trademarks and copyright holders. Forever Dog. The Chop is produced by Forever Dog and Moguls of Media. Mom. Hosted by Latrice Royale and Manila Luzon. Produced by Big Dipper. Mixed and mastered by Will Pitts. Executive produced by Willem Balai. Alaska Thunderfuck. Brett Boehm. Joe Cilio. And Alex Ramsey. Our theme song is The Chop by Manila Luzon and Latrice Royale. <laughs> <laughs>